So, 3.06, state space model of a rotational mechanical system. Oh, crap, I loaded in the wrong one. This has the solution already in it. Not actually for this problem, because I didn't have time to type in the solution. This is for the previous problem. All right. So we're going to work with this rotational system. So the source is a rotational velocity source. And we have a moment of inertia, sort of a flywheel, at least in the schematic it's a flywheel. And then we have a uh, drag cup. And so drag cup B1, a uh, bearing on the shaft B2, and then a spring element connected to the ground. Okay, so this is our dynamic system. This is the schematic of it. So we need to go through and do a model. We need to start, though, with a linear graph model because I didn't give a linear graph model. So step zero is to do the linear graph model. Okay, so there's going to be a ground node, so I'll write linear, linear graph. There's going to be a ground node, so let's draw that in. And we need to determine the other nodes in the system. So which other nodes are there? What do you guys think? The node between the damper and J? So between rotational and J, one. So yeah, so J is definitely going to have an angular velocity, right? And so this this whole section of shaft we'll assume is all at the same velocity of omega J. So um, we can put a node in there and we'll <coughs> denote that it's the J node by bringing it to ground, J. And then we have a um, another distinct angular velocity. We haven't encountered this yet where we have an angular velocity source, but in this case we have one an angular velocity source uh, that's applied to some shaft here that doesn't have a, an inertia shown, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a node with an angular velocity source entering it, but it must be like a small shaft, light. This must have a lot more inertia associated with it because we didn't put a flywheel on the schematic. Mm -hmm. So there's this here, and we'll connect that with the velocity source, omega s. And which direction should I draw the arrow? Towards ground? Yeah, as long as we first draw a coordinate arrow that way, right? So, ro so positive rotations using the right-hand rule are in the, the right direction. So that means that it's a cross-variable source. So it goes away from the node of application toward the ground, so there's our omega s. <clears throat> and are there any other distinct angular velocities in this problem? No. No, no that's it, right? I think that, that probably rotational mechanical systems are the most difficult to identify these for, but think of if it's a shaft, we're just assuming, unless we draw in a spring element, that the shaft is rigid and it's all at the same angular velocity. Uh, so that's what we've done here. So there's this bit of shaft that's at some angular velocity. This shaft with some angular velocity, also it's an inertia node. And then the ground node. That's all we've got. The, the rest of it is um, going through some element. So now we need to include the other elements. So our B1 element, where does that go? 
goes through the J. Yeah, so it goes right here, right? And so there's our B1. It's the uh, it's the a drag cup. It's drawn as a drag cup, and it's cu it's the coupler for this shaft, right? There's no other way that the that the torque gets transmitted through uh, than through this this B1. So which direction should I draw this arrow? Towards J. Towards J because it's in the direction of the coordinate arrow, and the coordinate arrow is going to encounter first this side of B1 and then the J side of B1. So, so we draw it that way. Then we have a uh, our our uh, bearing model B2 and our spring. And so, which nodes do they connect between? J and ground. Both of them do, right? J to ground. So this is going to be our B2. And then our K also. Probably, I mean, don't want to do confusingly, but we could draw one over here, K. So they're in parallel. It doesn't matter which order we draw them. We could have drawn it to the right, but it was getting a little... It was just not very pretty, so we wanted to make it prettier. So we drew the K over here. But it goes between this node and ground. That's the important thing, right? OK, so we are ready for our steps, right? 1A is to draw the normal tree. So normal tree. So uh, I encourage you to bring like a highlighter or something. I'm just going to change colors on this when I do this. So, so the, the order goes, remember we, so rules are can't create a loop, must connect to all the nodes. So typically, we're going to say, oh, OK, all the nodes are in the graph. Let's start just saying that all the nodes are in the graph and not having to highlight all of them because it's kind of annoying. Really, what we care about are the branches, the, branch, the elements, including the elements in, in the branches. So. The next one is angular velocity sources, right? Or sorry, across variable sources, across variable. which in this case is an angular velocity source, right? So it's this guy. And I'll highlight it in green. And then we have the A-type energy storage elements next, which J is our only a type energy storage element so we've got that now uh, are we done with the yeah. normal yeah. tree we're done with the normal tree yeah with the normal tree <laughs> we're done with the normal tree because we have <laughs> connected all the nodes together if we add any more elements to the normal tree we get a loop, right? So if we added K, this would be a loop. If we added B2, this would be a loop. If we added B1, this would be a loop. So we can't add any more elements, so we're done with the normal tree. Question? Um, ground is part of the normal tree, right? Yeah, that's right. So all the nodes are, and so it, we kind of get lazy and we stop highlighting them sometimes. But it is, it is good to, to do it, um, <laughs> but we get lazy. Can I say it's, it's the truth? So uh, we have our normal tree. So one B was to write the primary variables and then the secondary variables, right? But we'll do primary first. So they're across variables on branches and through variables on links, right? So across variables on branches, omega s. Omega J, and then we'll do uh, for three variables so torque K, torque B1, torque B2. That's all we've got, right? And then our secondary variables, secondary. Is just the permutation of that, right? So the torque from the source, the torque from the 
uh, the torque through the, the moment of inertia, the uh, angular velocity across the spring, the angular velocity across B1, and the angular velocity across B2. So those are our primary and secondary variables. Okay, so we are ready now to find our state variables, which are across variables on A types in the normal tree, so A type branches. So this is a branch and it's an A type. So omega j. And then omega s is a source, right? So it's not a state. It's not a state variable. So omega j is a state variable. And then it, uh, state variables also include through variables on t types in links, right? So do we have any t types in the links? Yeah, the spring. Yeah, the spring is a t type. And it's in the links. So tk, right? tk. And that's it, right? So what's the order of our system? Second. Second order because we have two state variables. The example that I did in uh, uh, the one that we um, yeah. did this morning at 3.05, lecture 3.05, is fourth order. Fourth order, no problem. Took us like 25 minutes. Easy breezy. Okay? No problem. All right, so. Uh, but we're doing a second order one here. Uh, so A, B, C, I think the next letter is D. And which uh, step is this? Do you remember? State vector. State. Yeah, so it's our vectors, right? State, state um, input and output vectors. So our state vector, X, we can choose either order but let's just choose it to be omega j and tk. And then we got to stick with that, whichever one we choose. And then uh, we have our input vector. How many inputs do we have? One. 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 So there's only going to be one element in the input vector, omega s. And then we have our output, which oh, I uh, uh, this I didn't change. So let's have the output be the spring torque, and let's do the uh, rotational moment of inertia. Rotational, well, rotational momentum. Angular momentum. That's the word I was looking for. Angular momentum. Uh, and there's only one, so it's going to be momentum, right? We like to use proper Englishes here. So, <laughs> all right. So, if those are our two outputs, then we have torque through k, so tk being one, and the other one is the angular momentum of j, which we usually use h as our symbol for angular momentum, right? So hj1. So those are our vectors. State, input, and output. Output was, I mean, I just decided that that's what we want as our output. We can choose them when we're a designer and we, we care about certain variables, we choose those <coughs> to be the output variables. I just said, well, we like torque, we like angular momentum, let's use those. I like torque. I don't know what you guys think about it, but it's always been kind to me. Yeah? Is that HJ1? Or yes, HJ1. So yeah, so angular momentum, often we'll use H for the variable of that, yeah. How did you select the state variables? Ah, selected the state variables by finding, so once we have the normal tree, we've got it, we just gotta interpret. So the state variables are 
across variables on A types in the normal tree. So we have an A type in the normal tree, it's J. Okay. And then uh, through variables on T types in the links. And K okay. is, a, is a T type in the link, so we use the through variable for it, which is the torque. And I know it's like we're like bringing together a lot of definitions. We're building these definitions into one procedure. But this procedure, uh, once, once we do a few of these, and you guys have homework this week on these, so hopefully you know, you're getting this practice yourself, uh, it, it, you know, remembering that that is what it is. I mean, it's just like imprinted on my brain. <laughs> I can't forget it. I, sometimes I joke, like it's like sing song. So state variables are cross variables on, you know, but it, it isn't very sing song. But you kind of get, you kind of get it um, in your mind after a while. Uh, but you can always go back to the list, right? You can always go back. But usually, I, after a few of these each year, I like get spun back up and I don't need to go back to the list. And, and in reality now, this is like the fourth time I've taught this. Uh, I never have to go back to the, the rules anymore because um, they're just imprinted. So, 1E. E. And, and, and mind you, I don't have a great memory for things like remembering formulas or anything like that. I, I hardly ever remember stuff. So this is just, it's a process that eventually sort of imprints itself. I'm not great at that, you know. So 1E, e, uh, as I recall, we're ready for the elemental equations, right? So elemental, and we like drawing this table, right? We like drawing this table where we list all of the passive variables. And I'm going to let you guys in on a little idiom that I use. I like to draw the energy storage elements first. It's because those are the elemental equations that are going to become our state equations. Okay, so the energy storage element elemental equations become our state equations. So I like to write them first because I know that they're like the ones that are going to stick around the whole process. And then the later ones are going to get eliminated. So I, I tend to write those later. So I, I'll start with, so I'll do J. So we'll list all the elements. J, K, and then we have uh, B1 and B2. Those are all of our elements, right? Our passive elements. And so, J has the, uh, we're going to use dot in this problem because there's no electronics in it, so we can use dot because there's no I. I love it when we get to use that. It's like my little, like, um, it's one of those little fun nuggets that you find. It's like an Easter, what do they call it? Easter egg? It's an Easter egg for me in these problems when I get to use dot instead of having to write D, D, T all the time. So, you know, it's the little things. You just got to embrace them. So omega J dot equals 1 over J T J. All right? That's the elemental equation. It says the torque is proportional to the angular acceleration. And we have the, the, the spring elemental equation, which tells us that Tj dot, no, not Tj, Tk dot, right? Tk dot equals k omega k, which is to say that the time rate of change of the torque through the spring is proportional to the angular velocity across it. And then uh, for B1 and B2, it's the same formula. So TB1 equals B1 omega B1. And TB2 equals B2 omega B2. All right. So those are our elemental equations. No problemo, right? Just straightforward, yeah. Um, so why are they um, dot variables? 
uh, uh, dot. Oh, that's because the elemental equation for uh, moment of inertia has a, a time rate of change. So it's d so dot means ddt. So it's ddt. So, so I figured you guys were most, mostly familiar with that notation, but some of you may not be. So is that the case? Well, I've seen it before. I was just wondering if it was a special case for why we're using it now. Uh, yeah, we're using it now, and it's just because ele with electronics, we, we don't use it. In general, as mechanical engineers, we freaking love using dot because mm -hmm. it's way, way easier to use. But when we use electronic stuff, we have this damn eye that comes around. And it has a dot on it already. So you give it two dots. And then it just gets really ambiguous if you like if you start putting a dot over that. You gotta be really careful. Is that a double dot? If your dot yeah. sort of wanders over here, is that I double dot? It's a little bit confusing. So we just avoid dot notation. Uh, you can use prime, but for whatever reason we don't. So yeah. uh, and we like using prime as like this is like a different version of the variable, so I don't know. Notation, it's just it's weird. What can you say? It's always weird. <laughs> okay, so we've got our elemental equations, and now we're ready to write our continuity and our compatibility equations. So let's go to a new page. Ooh, what letter am I on in the alphabet? F comes next, I remember. Okay, so continuity. And I'm actually going to start using another idiom I think is maybe helpful. So for continuity equations, we need to write one for each of the passive branches, right? Passive elements in the normal tree. So um, let's, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, passive branches. So let's write a, draw a table with branch as the first column. And the second column will be equation. So let's list our passive branches. And this is going to be funny in this case. J. <laughs> this is the only one. Ah, oh, man. This is a little anticlimactic, wasn't it? It was cooler to do on the fourth order one. Watch the video. All right, so J has the continuity equation. Let's go back and look. So the continuity equation is going to come from drawing a contour, right? And when we draw a contour, that did not change the color that I have. OK, so uh, we have to draw a contour that intersects this branch and no other branches, right? There's one. <laughs> it's the easy one, right? Of course, we could have also drawn this one. And you guys are like, nah, let's not do that. OK. So uh, we need to write the through variable for j. So that is torque for j, tj. And it is leaving the contour, right? So it has to be equal to everything going into the contour. So let's say, switch back to black, tj equals tb1, and then the other two leave, right? Minus tk minus tb2. So tj equals TB1 minus TK minus TB2. And that's all we needed, so the table seems a little superfluous at this point. But G. So 1G, compatibility, right? Compatibility. It's a lot of I's and L's in there. It's confusing. So we need one compatibility equation for each link, right? So each passive link. And if we look at the links, 
we see there are three of them. And so it's K, B1, and B2. So I'll do this, this table thing here. So link equation. Just, this just sort of helps us organize and not forget any links, right? So let's do uh, K, B1, B2. The equation associated with each of them arises when we, repl when we temporarily place that link into the normal tree and create a loop, right? Then we write the loop equation or the compatibility equation for that loop. So if we pop in K, um, we have this loop formed with J, right? And it says that omega K is equal to what? Omega J. That's a, that's a nice one. I like equations like that. Omega K equals omega J. Bam. One down. B1, it's the only like non-trivial one in this. We place that in with the, with the uh, normal tree. And we get this loop that's you know, omega S, J, and B1. So we want to solve this for omega B1. So we're going to say omega B1 is just omega S minus omega J. Right? So you remember you start at the tail and you go to the head and everything that goes in the direction you're going you say plus everything that goes against you say minus and you've got it so uh, omega b1 equals omega s minus omega j omega b1 equals omega s minus omega j and then b2 is one of these sort of trivial loops again, right? So we stick B2 in, we get this loop with J, and it says that omega B2 is equal to omega J. <laughs> omega J. Sweet. Okay, and that, that's all we need. So we are done with the ones. Step one done. Now, step two, uh, and the first part of step two is always easy. So what we do is we rewrite our elemental equations using the continuity and compatibility equations to eliminate the secondary variables that we wrote them in terms of. So it's just a, an immediate substitution is all we need to do. So let's rewrite our table so we have J, K, B1, B2. And we have omega J dot equals 1 over J. Instead of TJ, which is what it was when we originally wrote it down, we now have a continuity equation for TJ. So we get to eliminate TJ immediately by just substituting in T b1 minus tk minus tb2 which sounds like a hashtag for something that you would uh, post on Instagram but in fact is the name of this variable of course I'm speaking of tbt but today's Wednesday sorry okay so uh, we also have an equation for K, so TK dot equals K instead of VK, or not VK, Omega K, okay. we're going to write, we're going to substitute in the compatibility equation here that Omega K is equal to Omega J. Bam. So goodbye Omega K. B1 has so I actually uh, there is a step that you can do which I have taken out of the steps 
um, for our procedure because you can always at this point do a little bit of interpretation. You have to eliminate the variable, you have to eliminate one variable from uh, these equations, b1 and b2. And you know which variable that's going to be because your, our procedure gives us that variable in the compatibility continuity equation solved for. So it's already queued up to substitute. We want to substitute in this case for omega b1 and omega b2 in the next two equations. Um, and so we can, re we can, if we needed to, we could solve these for an uh, a variable that made sense for the substitution. In this case, it already makes sense because we're going to substitute it for omega b1 and omega b2, and they're already on the right-hand side, so we don't have to rearrange anything. We could, at this point, rearrange if we needed to, but we don't need to. So Tb1 equals b1. Instead of omega b1, we're going to substitute in omega s minus omega j. And very similarly with tb2, b2 is multiplied by omega b2, which is just omega j. So we have now eliminated half of variables we need to get rid of. So, well, actually, not just half that we need to get rid of. Half of our variables total, which is nice. Now we just have how many more variables do we need to eliminate? Two, Two variables, right? TB1 and TB2, because everything else here is a state variable or an input. And that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to eliminate everything else. So our our 2b is the part that's, you know, we got to eliminate the rest, right? So eliminate non-state and non-input variables. So in this case, it works out nicely because we are, are and this happens, this ha does happen, it's not super rare that this happens. Um, this happens pretty frequently, that it's really easy, and we can just use these latter two equations, the D-type elemental equations, to immediately eliminate the variables we want to in the, in the equations above. Sometimes there's, it's more complicated than that, but a lot of times this just happens. Um, when it gets more complicated, I recommend, you know, trying for a few minutes with just algebra, trying to eliminate variables the good old-fashioned way. Um, uh, and if that's not working, then switch over to sort of computer algebra system, either Mathematica or the other website that I sent out, um, um, Cameron Devine's website, which is online and working now, and it's pretty sweet. So, Okay. Uh, eliminate non-state and non-input variables. Um, so, in fact, we can just take these and immediately plug them in to the equations above, and we're left with just the, the two energy storage element elemental equations, so J and K. So, omega J dot equals 1 over J. TB1, we have an equation for that, right? So, we use B1 omega s, which is a, the source variable, minus omega j, which is the state variable, and then we move on, minus tk, which is a state variable, right? And minus tb2, which we have an equation for, minus b2 omega j, and look, we have no more variables that are not, so Omega j, state variable. Omega s, input. Omega j, state. Tk, state. Omega j, state. Boom. We're good. Uh, and then we've got uh, omega, not omega, tk dot equals, so from up here, k omega j, and oh my god, we're done. <laughs> right? Because this one, uh, omega j is the state variable is a state variable, so we're already done. All right, so 
Now uh, we need to do our 2C, which is to write in standard form, right? Standard form. And to write in standard form, uh, we always have the form x dot equals the A matrix times the state vector x, right? So I'll re I, I like to rewrite x here to remind ourselves of the order that we had our variables in. So we chose omega j to be the first one and tk to be the second one. So it's good to remind ourselves of that. Plus the B matrix times the input vector, which is vs, right? Now, let's figure out the dimensions of our A matrix. Our A matrix has to end, so after we multiply it by the state vector, we have to end up with a 2 by 1 vector, right? Because x dot over here is our state vector time differentiated, which is a 2 by 1. So if I end up with a 2 by 1, it's going to be, so it, this first dimension has to be 2, right? Because it's going to be a 2 by something multiplying a 2 by 1, so the outer dimensions are left. So what's the second dimension? 2 by 2, right? Because the inner dimensions must agree for this multiplication. So we have to end up with 2 uh, on the outside. And then uh, uh, on the inside, we have to end up with uh, uh, equal dimensions, so 2 by 2. So, and it turns out, so 2 by 2, you might say, oh, well, that's n by n. That's the, the order of our system. That's always how it works out. So your A matrix is always n by n if n is the order of your system. We have a second order system, so we end up with a 2 by 2. And, you know, I should probably make this a little bigger. I always think back to that John Mulaney skit the big ass b big ass b yeah that's like that's how i i still i know better i'm like i should always give myself extra space and i still do it every single time it's great okay so let's write in this first equation this is the equation that has like not zero stuff in most of it because the second equation's got mostly zeros first equation says omega j dot equals we got to figure out what the omega j term is, the tk term is, and the vs term is. So we could come over here and say, you know, rewrite this again with explicitly in terms of the term for omega j, the term for tk, and the term for omega s. But we also are going to try to um, just look at it, combine them in our mind. It's a good practice to try to do. Only if you get it right. And if, it, if you get it wrong, then you screwed up. Okay, you shouldn't have done it that way. That was a bad idea. Okay, so. Omega J is the first one we need. So we see omega J show up twice. So it shows up here and it shows up here. Let's look at what the coefficient is that pops up from this term. A negative sign, B1, and then a one over J. This one has a negative sign, a B2, and then the 1 over J. So it's going to be negative. They're both negative, so negative B1 plus B2 divided by J. That's the omega J coefficient. The TK coefficient is the next one that we need. I only see one TK in here, right? So it has a negative sign and then it has a, a 1 over J. So it's just negative 1 over J. Our second equation is TK dot equals K omega J. So we already have our first coefficient, K omega J. And then <coughs> Do we have anything else? No, zero. Just zero for TK. And then we didn't even fill in. We should have, right? We screwed up. We should have written in um, our V, our, not VS, Omega S. Oh, man, slipping, slipping. 
Omega S. Okay, so our B matrix is, uh, is the coefficient of these inputs. So this first equation had an omega S in it, and I left it off. I didn't even put it in. But fortunately, we had this empty C matrix, and I was like, or sorry, B matrix, and I was like, oh no, what are we going to do? So uh, we had an omega S term here, and what was it? B1 over J. B1 over J. B1 over J. And what is the omega S coefficient in the second equation? Zero. Zero. Awesome. So we've got that. So we're, we're, this is like, so this is the state equation, right? State equation in standard form. This is like a huge accomplishment that we got here. We took our time in this example, so we were sort of meandering and took our time. But still, it didn't take us that long. This is our A matrix. This is our B matrix. So we have half of our state model. We have our state equation. The hard part to get is the state equation. We got it. Now we turn to the output, right? So 2D is outputs in terms of state and input variables. So we said our first output variable is, uh, uh, what did we say? TK. TK. So TK, well, let's rewrite that in terms of state variables and input variables. How do we do it? Trick question, it's just TK. <laughs> because TK is a state variable, right? Yeah. No, it's the simple stuff that really throws people off. Okay, so TK is a state variable, so we, we don't need to really do anything. TK equals TK. The second, state, uh, the second output variable I said was the angular uh, momentum of J. So I said that was H J which is hj. There was only one j. So hj. And our hj is defined, uh, angular momentum is defined as the moment of inertia times the angular velocity, right? So it's equal to j times omega j. And oh my god, omega j is a state variable, so we're done. Don't worry, I put in some more complex ones in the previous example, so you guys can go back and look at those. Um, so great. Two, uh, e does come after D, it turns out. Um, we got to do standard form of the outputs. So the output is equal to we have two outputs, so it's going to be C matrix has got to be a two by, and we have two states, so two by two matrix, multiplying the state vector omega j t k. Now it doesn't always end up being two by two; it just happens to be two by two in this case, and it, it doesn't always end up being square. A matrix is always square. This is not always square, uh, and then we've got the D matrix being a two by. How many inputs do we have? one so we have omega s there now we just need to fill in the blanks tk equals tk how are we going to write that in here the first zero row one. zero omega j's one tk and then how many omega s's zero nada nada omega s's and then, our second output equation is that hj is equal to j omega j. So what is the omega j coefficient? J. j. What is the tk coefficient? Zero. What is the omega s coefficient? Zero. Bam! This is our output <laughs> equation. And I, and this is the c matrix, this is the d matrix. So we have our full state space model. I argue that this procedure that we've gone through is not that bad. 
And if you get a little bit of practice on it, I really and truly believe that all of you could get 100% on the exam on Monday, okay? This procedure is clearly going to be central to that exam. So I'm not, that's not like necessarily the only thing that's going to be on the exam, but it's certainly going to be a large part of the exam. So yeah, if you know this front and back, like you're, you're going to be in really good shape for the exam on Monday. Okay, what else okay. is going to be on the exam? That's a good question. What do you think should be on the exam? Awesome. 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 Awesome.